Well, good morning, I am Katie Dugan. I am the Associate Director of AT&T's Alternative Fuel Vehicles Program. So I am responsible for strategy, execution, communications, and really serves as the single point of contact for our program. Cool, so why the switch? AT&T really sees value in the switch to alternative fuel vehicle programs or vehicles. We have over 73,000 vehicles on the road. And while that is good in terms of our business, assuming that we need all those vehicles, it's not really a badge of honor that you want to have one of the largest private fleets in the United States because that automatically means that you're putting a lot of emissions into the air, you're consuming a lot of fuel. So a couple of years ago, AT&T really started to consider how can we become a part of the solution and not just a part of the problem. And we started looking at alternative fuel vehicles as a potential option to help us do exactly that. So part of our commitment is to deploy up to about 15,000 alternative fuel vehicles through 2018, including up to 8,000 compressed natural gas vehicles and over 7,000 hybrid electric vehicles. And with the changes in the industry, we've really made a right turn and included battery-operated vehicles into that as well. And the benefits being, of course, the reduced emissions with the compressed oh, okay. natural gas, reducing our dependence on imported sources, sources of oil, as well as the fact that, as they said in the, uh, the, the opening remarks, it's American, it's cheaper, it's cleaner, and it's internet. That's wonderful. So are you guys seeing some fuel savings these days? Absolutely. Actually, during 2010, we were able to save over a million gallons of conventional fuels with our compressed natural gas vehicles, with, of course, fuel prices being on the uptick that they are, compressed natural gas is generally about 30 to 40 percent less expensive. So significant cost savings benefit there with that million gallons displaced 